Today we have the opportunity to talk about another colonial Upchurch ancestor. I refer in this case to Richard Upchurch II, who was a member of the fourth generation of the family and head of the Moccasin Creek branch of the family. Let's have a little overview of Richard Upchurch II and then we'll go into some detail. He was born in 1725 in Brunswick County, Virginia. And there he married and had his first children. Then he moved to North Carolina where he was found on the rolls at, in 1755. And he lived eventually in Dunn, Dunn Township in southern Franklin County, North Carolina. And there we find on the record his 11 children. He died there in southern Franklin County, North Carolina in 1798 at the age of 73. Let's take a look at our chart of colonial upchurches and see how he fits into the family. Here you see the arrow which points to him being a member of the fourth generation of the family and one of four heads of branches of the family. You see below his list of 11 children and uh, you recognize that uh, Richard II was the son of James I, grand, the grandson of Richard I and the great-grandson of Michael Upchurch I. Um, now I'm very proud of this particular individual, Richard Upchurch II, because he was my great-great-great-grandfather, or as in family history circles we sometimes say, my third great-grandfather. And although I'm very proud of this individual, I have to share him with several hundred thousand other people because he is the progenitor of about one half of all of the American uh, individuals who have ever lived in, in this country. And I say that because he had 11 children, each of whom were head of a clan, and there were 22 clans. So by my math, 11 out of 22 is 50 percent. Now let's go to a poster of uh, Virginia where he was born. And in this poster, we have the highlighted area in southeastern Brunswick County, Virginia, that we have previously reported on as being an enclave of upchurches. And I have great hopes that we will find out the specific location of lands there that belong to our different upchurch ancestors. But we can be reasonably sure that Richard Upchurch II was actually born in this particular highlighted area in Brunswick County, Virginia and married there and his children began to appear there. Uh, the, now, in order to um, get a better feel for this, let's look at what someone else has had to say when they tried to summarize the situation. And I refer in particular to our dear friend and uh, person no longer with us, Etta Bell West, who wrote this charming little book about um, our ancestors. And she has a passage on Richard Upchurch II, uh, which I will uh, read uh, briefly. And in this little book, she writes on page 27 that Richard Upchurch was probably the oldest son of James Upchurch. Now, according to Bill West, she speculates that when James died in 1765 without leaving any land to his son Richard Upchurch II that he probably had already given him some land and that's why he didn't mention him in his will. We know for a fact that Richard Upchurch II did own land. Now there's no recorded deed that shows a transfer from his father to Richard Upchurch II but we have other ways of knowing that he had land. And Bell West records as follows. The location of the property of Richard Upchurch is revealed in the following. On 16 June 1756, Lewis Parham was granted 516 acres of land in Brunswick County, Virginia, on White Oak Creek, 
Adjoining Richard Upchurch, and that's recorded in Virginia Patent Book 33-2. Now, um, there are other records that show uh, Richard Upchurch II in Brunswick County, Virginia. For example, um, in uh, the May and June court in 1754, she writes here on page 27, a lawsuit was recorded wherein Lewis Parham versus Richard Upchurch and William Ledbetter led to a settlement by payment of seven pounds, four shillings, four pence, and a half penny. And that was in Brunswick County Court Records in 1754. Um, we have one or two other records of him being there. Uh, in the September court in 1753, Richard was a defendant in a case of Edwards versus Richard Upchurch, and that was in Brunswick County, uh, Virginia, Order Book 5 slash 38. Now, we know we have to move on with him transferring to North Carolina, and the specific reference we have is that Richard Upchurch II was in North Carolina on the tax rolls in 1755. Um, now, let's uh, give some thought to what things may have been like in North Carolina as Richard Upchurch II contemplated moving to North Carolina, which in fact will tell us what the general situation was as other members of our family move from Brunswick County North to Virginia to North Carolina. And I show you here a map of North Carolina in which I have two large colored areas. One is in yellow and one is in green. And they in fact refer to what would have been two very large counties at one point in time. But let me tell you how this unfolded. The fact is that in the early 1700s, along about 1710, 1720, there were, there were settlers in eastern North Carolina in considerable abundance. And they began to occupy the land and clear it for farming and so on. And this was close to the sea coast and on the rivers, so they had good access and transportation. And they pressed ever inward. The problem was is that they pressed westward, they came upon the Indians who were in full control of central North Carolina. And so there was a war that broke out in uh, along about 1720 to 30 to 40 between the white settlers and the government and the Tuscarora Indians. Well, that was a one-sided battle. So by 1740, the Tuscarora Indians had been completely defeated. And although some of them continued to live in the area for a considerable period of time, the fact is that the white settlers were now free to push inward. So that is why there was created in uh, 1746 two large counties, which I show you here colored in uh, yellow and green. The yellow represents what was then created in 1746, Granville County. You'll notice that there's a small section of that yellow area that's still labeled Granville, and that's all that's left of the large county, which covered really what we now know as Granville, Vance, Warren, and Franklin. At the same time in 1746, there was created another large county called Johnson County, and it was, it, it was the area shaded in green, and eventually it would be split up and Wake would become the western part of that large county and Johnson the southern part. So the situation that uh, the Upchurches faced as they moved from Virginia to North Carolina is that they moved into one of these two large counties. So when we say that uh, Richard Upchurch II was on the tax roll in 1755 in Granville County, we mean it was in this very large county that when as of 1755 would only have been in existence seven years. Now, we don't know at first glance where in that big county uh, he was found, but we do know from later studies that it probably was in the easternmost section. Uh, let's uh, think a little bit more about how that uh, uh, what location our ancestor Richard Upchurch II may have uh, come to uh, 
uh, live in. You see the Franklin County there is the southernmost part of this large yellowed area originally from Granville County. What happened is that along the way the eastern part of this large area was split off into a county called Butte County. And we know from other records that it was in this eastern part that Richard Upchurch II had his land. Now that Butte County didn't exist for long before it was divided into two parts with the northern part becoming Warren and the southern part becoming Franklin. And we suspect now again that Richard the land was falling into the southern part of that area. As a matter of fact, we know later on that he definitely was in the very southernmost tip of Franklin County. That is a broader story we will have to tell in order to give you a little better sense of how Franklin County came to be divided up in later times, I'd like to show you a map before we address our, the issue of exactly where Richard Upchurch II's land was, because we do have a few hints. Um, the, uh, this map I wish to now show you is of the townships in Franklin County as they existed as of 2008. So this is a modern map. And you see here there are ten townships. I have colored the three most southern of these, namely Harris, Cypress Creek, and Dunn. Now Dunn Township, you see there in yellow, was really the eventual hotbed of upchurch uh, existence in Franklin County. They did spill over the line into Wake, which crossed uh, Moccasin Creek, which divided uh, Wake and Franklin County, then even as it does now. Uh, so we will find a, a great deal more information about the upchurches there, and it will take considerable more telling. Now, in order to, um, for you to have a grasp of this, we have to talk about some of these border changes that took place. But I'd like to explain to you before we go into that, perhaps in another video, how these counties happen to have the shape that they have, as you see here on the 2008 uh, voting township record. Now, originally, these county, these precincts and Townships didn't look exactly this way. And I can tell you how it all came about. After the Civil War, the North Carolina State Legislature was in great turmoil because the federal government was dictating how it should be constituted. And in part, it was constituted by um, a number of people who were sort of foreign to the community, one of which was an individual from Ohio. Now, in those days, they would call him a carpetbagger or a scallywag, but I won't be so negative. I will report that he brought a positive aspect. He remembered that in Ohio, which I suppose was his home, that the townships were laid out in a neat fashion of six by six miles. Now, that was nice flat country out there, and they could do that, and besides, the government set itself the job of dividing the countryside up in that way. Well, of course, in North Carolina, we'd already been divided up by cow paths and streams and Indian trails and that sort of thing long ago. But this individual insisted that North Carolina retrofit its township lines and that they be, at of all possible, eight by eight square miles. Now, we had a few counties were sort of square, and you could fit in some eight by eights. But look at this map. Franklin County was an odd-shaped county. And there's no way you were going to fit a lot of eight by eight mile square areas. But you can see the surveyors did the best they could. They tried to lay these out in a squarish sort of form. Now, in the case of Dunn Township, it didn't look square at all. And you may wonder about how, it, how its name persisted over time. And I can tell you that when the, in about 1870, after the legislature acted in 1868, and they laid out these new forms, the surveyors tried to keep the same general names that had applied to the areas before. 
So what you see is Dunn Township there, created officially about 1870, had in fact been called Dunn's Township for many decades. So if we go back to 1800, uh, 1810, 1820 and so on, we will find a huge number of records citing as being in Dunn Township which was precisely in this yellow colored area you see here. So that's a little bit of the story about how the boundaries have been shaped. And now we have a great deal more information to tell you about Richard Upchurch II, but we'd like to do that in another video which we will call Richard Upchurch II uh, Parts Video Part 2. Uh, we have a wonderful record of how this individual has uh, evolved moving from Brunswick County, Virginia to North Carolina. And in um, Dunn Township in Franklin County, we have literally hundreds of records. Perhaps this branch of the family is better documented than almost any other. And it gives me great pride to bring this information to you and to look forward to telling you in another video some of the details about some of the visits I made to this area over the years and some of the information that came from that. Thank you for your attention.